Hi there everyone. Uh, it's been a while since I've put together a video, so I thought I'd do um, a lot of really small videos. Um, and I'm going to make it into a series on logic gates, as it says here. So I'll make a whole heap of videos, just quite short, um, looking at logic gates. And the first one we're going to start with is the AND gate. Um, just first up, logic gates are the fundamental building blocks of all your different digital um, computer systems, let's say. So everything from the high-end PCs and Macs down to video game consoles, uh, PlayStations, uh, even back to the old school Nintendo and Atari 2600. Uh, logic gates are the fundamental building blocks of all these different systems, so it's pretty interesting to go right back to the core level and see what actually makes these systems tick. <clears throat> um, so the, throughout these demonstrations, I'll do some things on paper, and then I'll also bring up some stuff on the computer screen um, just so you can see what's going on. Okay, so if you haven't seen my other digital tutorials, I've got a couple of them. Check them out because they'll probably help you with um, a little bit of the lingo like logic ones and logic zeros, things like that. So let's get started with the AND gate. So the most basic AND gate would have two inputs, there and there, and one output. There's one right there. Quite often we call the inputs A and B and maybe the output can be called X. <clears throat> um, you can get more inputs, let's say three or four or five, and they can suit different applications. But the most basic one has two inputs. Now when working with logic gates, we're looking at using binary numbers. So on each one of these inputs, we can put a zero or a one. On the output, well that could be a 0 or a 1. And the output is dependent upon what's going on with the inputs. So what we can do here is draw up what's known as a truth table. Let me write that up. Truth table. And with this, you can write up every combination of 1s and zeros that you could have on the two inputs. So we could have 0, 0, so input A is a 0 and B is a 0, or we could have 0, 1, or we could swap it, so 1, 0, and the last one we could have is 1, 1. So four combinations for two inputs. Now a good way to remember what the output is going to be for an AND gate is every input must be a 1, must be a 1, to get a 1 on the output. So what we're looking at here is, the output will only be a 1 if every single input is a 1. So, we've got a 0 and a 0, the output will be a 0. A 0 and a 1 still be a 0, a 1 and a 0, the only time we will get a 1 on the output is when every single input is a 1. So there's our two inputs. They're both 1s, so now we'll finally get a 1, which is good. We could have an AND gate with 100 inputs, one output. If 99 of these inputs are all logic 1s, but one of them was a 0, we would still get a 0. Because the rule is, every single input must be a 1 in order to get a 1. So let's have a look at a really simple application of this. Now I highly recommend using www.logic.ly, so I think you say it as logically. Um, excellent site, I use this when I'm um, showing things to my students. So go to the, the website, logic.ly. Now you can buy this program for $29 for Windows, Mac or PC. You can download a free trial or you can try it for free online, <coughs> which I like to do. Uh, the only thing is you can't save it, um, or I haven't found a way to save it when you're using it online. So you might want to look at buying it if this is um, going to be useful to you. 
So now it gives us a library over the left hand side of all these different parts that we can put on our main um, editing area. So I'm going to grab the AND gate that I've just been talking about, put it in there, and now to control the inputs I'll put a couple of toggle switches in. Connect them up, and then we'll put a light bulb on the output. And from here we can start to control these two inputs. So if we have a look again at this truth table, there's four combinations of zeros and ones that we can have on two inputs. I said the only time we'll get a one on the output is when both inputs are a one. So let's try that out. Zero, zero. So both switches are off and the light bulb is off. If I go zero, one, you can see this one has a logic one on it, but still the output is a zero. One zero, the output is still a zero. The only time I should ever get a one on the output is when both inputs are a one. And now I get a one on the output. So I guess a good uh, place or a practical application of using an AND gate would be, uh, let's say, some simple alarm system. So we've got an alarm, and with this alarm there is a door, so there's a sensor on the door, and then there's like an arming panel. Very simple alarm. We have a speaker on the output, and we want that speaker to start making noise when the alarm is armed and the, uh, someone has broken in through the only door, which is this door. So if nobody's broken in, we get a logic zero from the door sensor, and if it's not armed, we get a logic zero. So remember the truth table for an AND gate is, uh, the only time you'll get a one is when both inputs are a one. So let's say that, um, so it's a zero at the moment, so no noise. Let's say we want to go out, so we're going to arm the alarm system, so we'll put in our combination. That will arm it, giving us a logic 1. Now because nobody has come in through the door, we have a 0 coming from the door sensor. So again, coming back to this, the only time we'll get a 1 is when both inputs are a 1. So if we've got a 0 and a 1, 0 and a 1, we get a 0. So still, the speaker is not making any noise. But then, if some guy tries to break in, we get a logic 1 at the door. That logic 1 appears here. So now that we've got two 1s, two 1s will give us a 1 on the output. So we will get a 1 coming through to the speaker, and that will start making noise. So that's a very basic application of where to use the AND gate. Alright, hopefully that was helpful. The next tutorial we will look at is the OR gate. So stay tuned for that one.